with that, I'll jump um, right into the slide. So this is a common slide. I used it earlier this year at uh, one of our uh, meetings in February. Um, but really just to re-emphasize re that uh, data side at our core, we, we continue to um, look back into the history and where we came from and straight, stay uh, true to our roots. Um, in 2009, uh, by the end of 2009, according to my records, uh, some of you may may know better than me. I know there were seven institutions initially, um, but by the end of 2009, there were 12 institutions from nine countries. And really, uh, these 12 institutions came together um, under Data Sites umbrella um, with the aim to safeguard common standards worldwide in respect of research data. Um, facilitating compliance with the rules of good scientific practice and other countries, uh, other institutions and countries were welcome to join DataCite and that remains true today. Um, we are a larger community with over 800 institutions from 43 countries and if we look at that in a bit more detail, we have now 33 consortia, um, over 2,100 repositories, uh, 238 members of the association, over 600 org consortium organizations. We've just reached over 20 million uh, EOIs and we are spread across 43 countries. And that's really exciting that we bring a incredibly diverse and passionate community together um, with a common understanding. And I'll, I'll talk towards the end of this introduction a bit about communities of practice our governance, um, the General Assembly, our members, you are our overarching um, governance and uh, together uh, the General Assembly with the board um, and members of the community uh, set out the strategic plan from 2018 to 2021 and this laid out the blueprint um, for us as an organization and a community to achieve our vision and mission. Um, from that, uh, we then uh, developed the data site vision 2020, which I'll touch on briefly. Um, there were um, some recordings prior to the meeting where I go into this in a bit more detail, but I'll touch on that briefly. And this then enabled us to set individual goals across teams and individual team members to make sure that we continue each and every day to serve uh, the mission and vision of data site and support you as our members. During this year, um, we uh, set out to achieve Vision 2020, um, and there were four key strategic priorities. The first being formalizing the new business model. Uh, we were really pleased to have worked with the community and uh, really appreciative of the support um, from the community through this process. We know that it wasn't as clear and easy and um, the messages that we got um, from various community team members following the process was really uh, appreciated from our point of view and um, really pleasing that uh, when we uh, presented the model that was uh, eventually um, formulated by the membership model advisory group, which was formed of members, that we had um, the membership model approved by an overwhelming majority. It was, I think, 98.3% uh, approved um, the new model. And so that was really pleasing. And um, this is important because this ensures that as infrastructure, we continue to um, be sustainable for the long term. And when we provide persistent identifiers, it's important that we can provide the infrastructure long term. And the investments that you've made as community members into this infrastructure is not lost. In supporting that, the second strategic priority was to optimize our internal operations, our systems and processes. So we've done a lot of work in streamlining our processes. And um, this helps ensure that we can scale efficiently. So keeping our costs under control through optimized operations and processes, but also ensuring the compliance um, within the various um, legislation and uh, policies within different countries, such as privacy policies, et cetera. Uh, we've also made uh, significant efforts in consolidating our services and infrastructure. This will continue into 2021. Uh, we've really laid a solid foundation with some uh, new improved uh, technology, um, I guess, under the hood, as one would say, and that really um, allows us to continue to um, provide um, 
cutting edge services and infrastructure to uh, you, our members. And then finally, but not least, the uh, fourth strategic priority is member-driven product development. And this is something that we talk about a lot. And it's, I think, something that many organizations and communities uh, mention. But it's really important that this is a true lived experience day to day. And so we've made some structural changes and process changes within our team to make sure that everything that we do in uh, development and making changes to meet the community needs goes through a very clear process and we published a blog post about this um, I think about two months ago and part of what Sarala will be doing in the following session is talking and getting some input into some of the things that we are thinking about. Um, at our core, um, as you all know, and this is why members join Datacite, our core activity is providing DOIs and metadata um, registration. And that's really important. And that's something that we continue to focus on and making sure that um, everything around our core activity connects and provides value to our members. And that's important where we get feedback into this. Uh, data site DOIs and the FAIR principles. And so um, this uh, continues to be an essential component uh, for implementation of the FAIR principles. So by using standardized metadata, so working with our uh, metadata working group that continues in operation for over 10 years um, to make sure that um, PIDs and DOIs um, and research data is findable making sure that it's accessible, so it's resolvable uh, worldwide in every browser, um, and the URL associated with the DOI can be updated and the DOI remains unchanged. I don't think this is anything new to any of you. And making sure that it's interoperable, so using standard vocabularies, collaborating with other PID infrastructures to make sure that we make links to other PIDs and making sure that it's reusable, that, um, through the research life cycle that researchers can cite research sources with confidence and um, also receive the proper credit when their work is reused and making sure that um, we provide rich up-to-date metadata, metadata and providing trust to the community. And the final slide that I wanted to mention, and this is something that uh, I believe in really, uh, I really believe in is building communities of practice. And uh, without the community, without our members, data site wouldn't exist. And so uh, we continue to try work as a community of practice and collaborate um, across different stakeholders, different sectors, different regions. And so in defining a community of practice, there has to be a domain, um, a common community and a common practice. And so our, our domain is our vision, connecting research and identifying knowledge. Our community is a global research community that continues as it did in 2009 to uphold the values um, of the open science community. And our practice is providing persistent identifiers, DOIs in our case, uh, for research data and other research outputs, connecting these DOIs and related metadata with a broader research ecosystem and providing the ability, um, according to our mission, to create, find, cite, connect, and use research. And so um, together, I like to talk about building communities and working um, cohesively um, together and having an open uh, forum for continued conversation and evolution of our infrastructure. And so I think that's 